Welcome back to Travel Like an Ching. At this point, most people know about Virgin Cruises and are curious about how great it is. Let me say up front, I absolutely love this adult-based cruise line. With anything in life, there is the good and then there is the bad. There are already a lot of videos out there highlighting the good. However, this video today is going to point out some of the bad. Now, hate is a strong word. Instead, let me use disappointed in when addressing these topics. That said, what are my 15 things that I hate the most about Virgin Cruises? More after this. So let's jump right into this. I think what I'm gonna do best is to just go down from one to 15. They're not in any particular order. Number one, furniture design. Let me say that the design palette of all of the Virgin ships is immaculate. My problem with the furniture is it's just too low. After many, many sports injuries, I have a couple of pretty bad knees and my hips aren't that great. As a result, anything that gets too low, it's hard for me to bend over and sit down as well as try to get up. So that is problematic with a lot of their furniture, especially the bed and the chairs in the public areas. I just wish they were higher. Number two, their choice of materials on the cruise ship. What I'm talking about specifically here are some of the choices they made in the toilet tissue category. I know that one's silly and you know, it's not important if you think of the grand scheme of things. And this could have just been an issue with my particular cruise or some kind of supply issue, but they had very rough toilet paper. Uh, I've been in very many situations where I would much rather use leaves than to deal with the um, toilet tissue that was on my ship the, um, when I was on there. Now, mind you, there are three Virgin cruise ships out there. I've been on two of them. And on both, the toilet tissue was not of quality and it really reflected. Number three, I would say that there is a weak shower seal. What I mean by that is, although the showers are very nice in terms of um, the heat, the, the hot water that's provided, as well as the uh, soap and amenities, and the uh, very nice look in the side overall whatever it is they're trying to do to keep those shower doors closed isn't working too well on several occasions the door kept opening up and causing me to soak the bathroom floor again on both ships that i've been on this was the case i hope they have a better fastening mechanism on other showers that they build number four thin mattress now this goes hand in hand with my uh, number one option that i talked to you about about in terms of furniture design this is more the comfort level although the bed was large and um, looked very comfortable the mattress was rather uh, stiff and lumpy now i'm not expecting a posturepedic on the cruise like, i've been on multiple cruise lines and laid in many cruise line beds for the brand new cruise ship as it is i would expect a lot softer mattress some individuals may like a firm mattress not myself i, I really need a little something a little softer and i'm not talking that much softer this was a pretty hard mattress to sleep on number five Public restrooms are very hard to find. I have to explain this a little bit. The design of the ship is incredible. I love the interior decor of the ship. With that, they made some compromises, signage for popular areas like the restroom. There was one instance where I was trying to find a restroom and I just couldn't because they don't clearly mark where the restrooms are in terms of either an M or a W, or even if they wanted to put it in virgin speak and come up with some witty way of um, highlighting the bathrooms what would make it really helpful for cruisers if there was a way to clearly mark where the restrooms are. On several occasions, I almost had an accident because I waited a bit too long at the bar while um, having an adult beverage with food. And then in, uh, in a panic, I went looking for uh, a restroom to not find one. In fact, I remember one instance where I had asked one of the workers who was very nice um, to where the bathroom was. And he basically said, down there about midway, take a left, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I went there 
could not find it. Went back to the guy and said, listen, this is an emergency. You have to take me to where the restroom is. He took me directly to where it was and it, I, I, I walked past it at least two times looking for it. It was not where I thought it would be. And what confuses things is right next to the bathrooms or in between the bathrooms was some type of crew access door. To go to go in the back of the house, it clearly didn't look like a um, a place for where a restroom was, and they could solve this very easily by putting some external signage out there indicating where the restrooms are. I hope they make that design change. This is a suggestion. Number six availability of the restaurants. Now, I love the concept that um, Virgin Cruises has about dining because basically every dining venue is a, um, a specialty dining venue, so everyone has access. The thing the thing that I don't like about that process is the availability because if you've tried all the restaurants um, and you wanna to try to go to another one uh, a second or third time, you're unable to do so because it's book solid. The other thing I don't like is the quote unquote hunger games aspect of booking those restaurants. If, if you're a new cruiser on um, Virgin, you may miss the nuance, and this is more of a tip than anything else, that before you do anything else, make your way over to uh, customer service and book your restaurants on day one as soon as you get on the boat. Don't wait to walk around. Don't go to get a drink. Book your restaurants, uh, especially some of the more popular ones. They fill up fast and you may be stuck with whatever's left over. Now, that's not to say that what's left over is bad because, you know, I ended up having to go to Razzle Dazzle, for example, more than a couple times. But I'll tell you, I love Razzle Dazzle, so that wasn't an issue. But if you really do want to um, spread out and try to sample all of the restaurants and maybe book twice at one that you really like, you have to get in line early and then do that right up front. That's a number one priority. Number seven the pool design. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed this pool area. And I, I, I did some research and read about what others have, are saying about the pool and they're all gaga over it, especially the, the design layout. So for one, in terms of placement, on one half or, or one side of um, the, the uh, pool area, they have the hot tubs, totally isolated from the pool. Now that's a design decision. Okay, I get it. They want to separate the hot tubs from the, uh, the pool area. However, in the pool area, there was no natural step up onto the platform to get to the pool. Again, I mentioned earlier, I have bad knees, I got bad hips. It was really difficult, now that you add water to the mix, being able to step up on that pool platform safely and get into the water and even get out of the water. So of course there are ladders, but we still have to deal with that last step from the deck onto the pool area to be able to even get into the area of the pool. Uh, I, I witnessed on one of the cruises I was on, uh, an older woman actually slipped and fell while trying to navigate. That is just a disaster waiting to happen for a lot of people. And I'm actually surprised it hasn't happened to more people. And I don't know what the, the um, solution is at this point because the ship is um, done. There was no signage of watch your step or be careful or what have you. And it's just, it's just a, it's a pretty hairy situation. So at the very least, please be cautious of the dangers of trying to get in and out of the pool, especially on the side that has no step. Down. Along with that pool theme, let me talk about number eight. The hot tubs weren't that hot. Now, I know normally on family cruises, they keep the hot tub less than the 102 degrees that is typical for a high temperature of a hot tub. And that's for reasons such as, you know, kids. They, they can't, you know, kids aren't supposed to be in some of the hot tub, get kids going anyway. And if the temperature's too high, it's not safe for them. As well as some adults, um, the temperature may not be um, too good. However, those people who know that they, they aren't having a good uh, time in the hot tub, they're old enough to know that they need to um, leave the hot tub. That being said, the Virgin brand is an adult brand. And as such, I would hope that they would heat the hot tub to the 102 degrees that it should be. And my, is it 102 or 107? What, whatever the, the heat level is, I, I wish the Virgin brand would, would up the temperature of the hot tub so that they are truly hot tubs. Number nine, app issues. Now, it's, it's almost a meme at this point. And this isn't just specific to Virgin Cruises, but the app just doesn't work. Uh, there's a feature on the app that says, 
you know, shake the app or shake your phone and they'll deliver champagne wherever you're at. I'm still shaking my phone and waiting for the delivery of the champagne. I'm not sure if it's a certain area of the boat you have to be in, but you know, I shook it. It said it was gonna deliver um, my champagne and I just waited there in that location for well over 45 minutes. And you would say, well, why would you wait 45 minutes to get champagne? I'm still asking myself that myself. I think I was more interested in seeing if it actually worked because it's a pretty cool concept. No matter where you're on the ship, shake it and they'll come and bring you your champagne. I, I wish that would have happened, it never did. And that's just one aspect that wasn't working. The app often crashed. It was hard to navigate. Uh, and I know, and it's been a little while I've last used it. So I'm hoping at this point they did do some fixes for it. But I've been on a lot of cruise ships and a lot of cruises and, you know, messed with a lot of apps uh, on these cruise ships. And by far, Virgin up to this point has been the worst. Number 10 waiting for service i want to uh, preface this with that i'm not talking about the specialty restaurant the service in those restaurants is exemplary what i'm talking about is the general eating location um, where most people will have their breakfast their lunch or late late afternoon snacks if you want to grab a burger go in and grab a burger the challenge is that you have to place an order to do that. There's someone who has to actually take an order, go get your food and bring it to you. Normally, that seems like it's a logical thing. However, it just seems like there's not enough Virgin staff to handle the size and space and volume of people who are in the restaurant. I know on several random occasions, I would go to eat uh, and in one particular instance, I got there. The person came to take my order. I was sitting there for a while. I decided, hey, let me get up and get my own beverage. And the person who took my order absolutely knew I was sitting at that location. I got up to get my uh, drink. By the time I came back, there was someone else sitting in my seat. My drink's in my hand and I'm looking. The one who took my order, who knew I was sitting there and had to deliver my food to that table, started taking the order of the people who are sitting there now. And I just looked at the person. They just shrugged their shoulders. I said, ah, don't worry, I'll, I'll go sit over here, right? You're gonna have a system where there's one person who's taking an order and you know someone gets up to either use the restroom or get a beverage or even look at the design dessert, um, a dessert a station, uh, that the seat should be protected, especially if the person's going to be delivering my food, took my order, and knows that I was sitting there. So any new bodies in that seat, it should have been fairly easy for them to see that and to steer them to a new location. Number 11. The reservation system in general, I, I echoed this in an earlier number, but just to say the reservation system in general is not optimal. It's really bad. Very popular restaurants get booked up quickly. Even when you do have your reservation, sometimes you're double booked. I found this the case when I was going to the Gumbai restaurant, which is the uh, Korean barbecue restaurant. Uh, even though I clearly had a reservation, someone else had a reservation. And the tricky thing about that is, especially again, Again, I'm a solo cruiser. You get you get um, you get a table sometimes with complete strangers if you don't, if you don't have a party big enough to fill that table. So they filled up a table. I was one of the people who was supposed to be at the table. Yet when I got there, they had already sat down a group who had extra people, and I was bumped. So I would hope that the reservation would hold me at the table. And as um, as Jerry Seinfeld once said. Oh, I'm sorry. We have no midsize available at the moment. I don't understand. I made a reservation. Do you have my reservation? Oh, yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservation. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. <laughs> if you did, I'd have a car. <laughs> See, you know how to take the reservation. You just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. Anybody can just take them. Let me uh, speak with my supervisor. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Number 12. 
the meal portions were very small. You're starting to see a theme here. Even though the food was delicious, I could not complain about the quality of the food or the presentation of the food. The portions that they served out were quite small. Now, I'm not saying I need like, Cheesecake Factory plates where there's like just Franken food all over the place. I'm not looking for that. But I, I would like more than like, you know, the gourmet kind of, you know, crostini with a little thing on it and a little spritz of that, right? I'm exaggerating. But the point is, they're pretty small portions that come out. And you're at liberty to order multiple things. But then I hear myself saying, yeah, could I have four plates of that order? I, I don't want to do that. So I don't know why why they can't make their portions just a little bit bigger to make it a little bit more comfortable for people who, who may want more. They had no problems if I asked for more, they just got it for me. But if they could just make my, my single order a little bit bigger, that would solve the problem. Number 13 no quiet spaces. Now, this was very frustrating, especially for someone like me, a vlogger, who was looking for a very quiet space in the public areas. Sure, my room was quiet. I can go back to the room and, and do what I needed to do. But I really wanted to find a location out on the ship where I can just chill out, maybe not necessarily um, do vlogging stuff, maybe read a book, or just be in a quiet place to just contemplate and meditate or relax. I mean, this really is an adult ship that you can do a little bit of anything that you wanted. As is, it's very noisy everywhere from, from stem to stern. There is music playing, not the same music. Different areas have different music uh, and it's fairly loud. And it's just hard to find a private space to just be quiet. There's no like library space but at least have a, a cove of the ship where you don't have the uh, music blaring so people can have just like a, a public, private, quiet space to sit. Number 14, there's no really well-defined loyalty program, at least as of yet. I know they're working on it, but they, don't, they really don't have a bona fide loyalty program honor their repeat customers by having a well-defined tiered system. I, I just wish Virgin would develop that a little bit better. Number 15, the last one, limited ports from the US. Now, I know this is rapidly changing as each sea cruise season comes about and they have more ships based out of the US, but they have a limited itinerary and they do have their private island in Bimini, Bimini um, spot that they go to and they have like a private area. But much other than that, there's like a handful of other ports that they hit, including um, the Dominican Republic and you know places like that. Uh, and then it's you, they beat it back to the U.S. So you spend more time uh, at sea than you do at their um, ports. I know that's changing, and by the time I'm saying this and putting this out, there may be multiple sites available. But you know, as of this taping, I'm not happy with the uh, port destinations that they have available. Okay, woo, that was a pretty long list. Today I covered 15 things you should be aware of on Virgin Cruises. I want to remind everyone that Virgin is still a tremendous cruise company. I love them and I'm definitely booking future cruises with them. I hope the information that I shared with you today is not going to prevent you from taking a look at Virgin as a brand. And many of the things I mentioned in the 15 items, one could argue are trivial. So when you have such a great product, and there's really not much to pick at, and, and you have to come up with you know 15 things that you don't like, these are my 15. You may have others, friendly reminder, just watch out for these things when you book your cruise. And I hope you do plan on booking a Virgin Cruise soon. It's such a great concept being a, a adults only cruise line. And I certainly hope that the information I provided to you today helps you with your planning of your next Virgin Cruise. Until next time. In, in Outback Steakhouse restaurants, they have the, you know, the Sheila, and I forgot what the other one is. Ah, scratch it, I'm not going to use that. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.